Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? Big P here, the voice of hardcore drinking. I've got a fucking hangover and uh, we've got to do an interview. We've got to keep at it. We've got to stay on it. Today, I'm joined by Matt Skelton from Essex, the cabbie. How are you doing, Matt? I'm well, mate. Yourself? All right. How's life in sunny Essex? Sunny Essex is, well, it's not very sunny. There's a big storm coming here at the minute, so it was a... Uh... Have you been up? Night to, night. Have you been What's up that? videos for a car wash yet on your car? No, I ain't, I ain't got that sorted out. So I don't. I, uh, car washes, I don't think are open now because we're in this tier four lock. So Aren't they? no, everything shut. Everything barbers, gyms, everything shut down here. God, so, uh, is everything pub shut? Pubs are shut. Yeah, pubs are shut. If, if everywhere we shut, if literally everything is shut, no, oh, it's not good, is it? Not people, and a lot of people are very unhappy. So, oh, so uh, but, how's your Christmas been? what's that? How's your Christmas been? All right, Christmas been well, mate. Yeah, enjoyed it. Uh, quite low key one this year, yeah, compared to the, what, what we normally do. and normal antics but yeah, it's been nice and chilled obviously couldn't see the other family members but it's it is what it is isn't it so yeah yeah i watched a good film last night public enemy james cagney it's a great film yeah. decent when i'm in my element i always put this on or oh, white heat have you seen white heat no i'll have to check that one out as well i like james cagney film do you like old films now? No, not really. Not really. What do you like? Gold? Yeah, I watched last night, I watched King of New York. I watched half hour of that before I've I finished it. I've got it here. It's uh, him over in a view to a kill, isn't it? Christopher Summit, is it? Christopher Walking, yeah. That's him, yeah. Yeah, it's a good one. Frank White is called, isn't it? Isn't it? Frank White, that's it. Frank White, Mr. White. Have you got a pal called Frank White? Have I got a pal Frank? called Frank White? No, I've got, I used to know a kid called Peter White. <laughs> okay. We used to call him Frank White, but yeah, King of New York's a good film, mate. Yeah, I've not watched it for a while, so. Good. It's 30, yeah. years old, 30 years old now, Ross, to be fair, but. Yeah, I think it might even be more. I think it's an old and light, but it's a classic. Yeah. Yeah, nineteen ninety. Sometimes you can't beat the old, the old, them old sort of classics. So, uh, speaking yeah. of old classics, how are we doing, Clinton Woods? Big shout out to you. Merry Christmas, Clinton. Hope you're well. Uh, boxing at the moment. There's a few people behind the scenes, old schools, pundits, trainers, fighters. They don't like where boxing's heading at the moment. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, I'm. I'm not positive. I'm not positive about the sport in a minute. So I'm not. Not really to. Uh, not really. To, the the quality of content has got to really s sufficiently improve. You know, because yeah. a lot of people seem to be losing interest, Russ. Yeah, the the uh, I'm hearing off people in the know that Joshua's uh, pay per view against Pula were shocking numbers really poor now they've not come out and said the numbers yet but normally they do after a couple of days don't they yeah i've heard it were really really poor and uh so fans voted with their feet so am i glad about that yeah i am i'm glad i'm glad fat people are starting to listen and say yeah we don't want to see joshua against men 40 year old we want no. to see proper fights there's only one fight now. It's Joshua against Fury. Any other one, I'm not interested in. Yeah, if he fought Usyk, it's a very risky fight for him, and I'd, I'd applaud him for that. But I don't even think they want that fight, do you? No, I so say it's a it's a it's a very very risky fight. I think they'd have, if they have to fight him, they have to fight him. But I think it's a it's it's if it, listen everything's in it, with that fight everything's in Joshua's favour because he'll have home advantage and he will get the rubber the uh, probably the rubber the green on the scorecards but he won't look good getting a controversial 
if that fight goes to distance, yeah, right. Yeah. It could be controversial, do you know what I mean? Because of Usyk's style, do you know what I'm saying? But I mean, do you really want to go into a a big fight like that with before before Fury fight fighting Usyk when it'd be slightly controversial? Do you know what I mean? Because I think it'd get appointed. I think it'd get appointed in that fight. Do you feel that Usyk? I can explain it. Do you think he's got too much in his locker for uh, Big Dos Femi? I think, um, I think he's got enough in his locker. I think he's. I think he's got enough in his locker to make it a very, very, very difficult night. Very difficult night, and and this this the size, maybe the physical size, but. He's not really that much bigger than Usyk. He's bigger, yes, he's bigger, but he's not that much bigger than Usyk. And he's probably the size of Pulev, maybe a tiny bit smaller than Pulev. Obviously, not physically as big, but he's just got so much more. It's the it's the movement, it's it's the feints, it's the changing of looks, it's tricks up his bag, it's the tricks up his sleeve. So. It's a very, very difficult night. It's all, it's an all, it's a style that's all wrong for Joshua. Do you know what I mean? When Pulev was the style that was all right for, jo- all right for Joshua. Do you know what I'm saying, Russ? Southpaw as well, isn't he? Yeah. Usyk. So, I mean, Eddie can want so, about fighting Usyk, but they don't want that fight, mate. That that could end up being two fights because he could lose to Usyk and then he'd have to rematch him because they always want the safety net, don't they, match him? Yeah, well, they're, they're, yeah, so they're sweeting the deal and uh, they get him to sign a rematch clause. They get him to sign a rematch clause. But yeah. listen, the, the, listen, even the even the casuals that I talk to, and I know you talk to people as well, they don't want to see, they, they're sort of backed into a corner now where, listen, we don't want to see anything else other than Fury. But yeah. I'm not too well, sure if you well, can well, compute. Can Fury do the fight though, Russ? I think Fury will fight him. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've not, I've, sorry, sorry, go on. I think Fury will fight him. Yeah, I don't think he's really bothered if he can beat Vladimir and uh, Wilder. Who's fucking Joshua? Side of them. Do you know what I mean? Can he take the fight though? That's the question. Well, he's he's tied up with he's at the moment. I mean, all these people keep chatting all this nonsense. It, and, and Tyson's chatting a lot of nonsense as well, but they don't understand, I think, how serious it is, this Al Heyman issue. And he's parked him up on it for 10 months, Fury, and he's not even got a fight lined up. So he'll be over a year out of the ring. And mm. it'll be 18 months before we see him, two years maybe before we even see him at ring again. So they're playing it down, this legal issue, but... I've been told it's pretty serious that what, what's going on behind the scenes. Um, mm. Al Heyman uh, and people like that, they don't mess about Shelley Finkel. They've been power brokers in boxing for years. They're, they're big dogs. They are big dogs in boxing. And when people like Frank Warren are cancelling Fury against Caballel on December 5th, when they're having to pull plug on announcement, you know it's serious, don't you? Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, Tyson's a good self-promoter, isn't he? He gets his set out there on Piers Morgan and Jonathan Ross and that, but he's not doing any fighting, is he? No, he's not doing no fighting. And this is the problem. I mean... Politics. Just like, politics, yeah. I mean, but but listen, if you fight... They, they must be... With that two-fight deal that they've done with Wilder, they, they must be... Heyman and people like that, they must must have got everything down to a T. They must have covered their backs. It's impossible that they haven't covered their backs and make sure everything was right. And just so these once in a lifetime circumstances, you know, they must have. I know that they, they say, oh, well, there's a deadline and that. I find it very hard to believe because Fury would have fought by that. Fury would have fought because I've just, even though like he's he's accustomed to earning probably a certain amount of money now, and he needs to be paid with you in every fight because of his guarantees, Russ. I mean, 
he'd still want to have kept active, do you know what I mean? Because I think activity is key for him. Yeah. So, be on his social media, he's training, he's keeping in shape and that. But I mean, he was in he was in Miami a little while back. Yeah, I think I think I think he was in Miami on his so, you see Clyde was on his social media and that. So oh, oh. Tyson. Yeah. Yeah. So he, something must be coming because, and I think they just have to get this Wilder fight out of the way. You know, I don't obviously I don't think you can do a Vegas fight at the minute because of the restrictions, but. Might have to take a lower gate and just go somewhere like Texas, like they've been doing, and just getting nine or ten thousand in certain places, or twelve thousand for what they had for the Canelo fight the other day. Well, what do? If they have to, if they do fight, right, and it's say they get a big arena and they have ten thousand fans in a big massive arena, then fans will just be charged extortionate prices, won't they, to make it up? And this is how how, how greedy. It reaches into the core of people and I think the pay-per-view uh, price will be expensive but let's just just get it on let's get there's a lot of talking and not enough fighting going on for, in my in my opinion let's just get rid of all the belts just bin all the belts and just get at it they don't have to get any sanctioning fees then and that's just that's just my opinion on it. I just think it's just get rid of belts it stopped all politics doesn't it and yeah just at it uh that's, that's just my take on it. I don't want to hear any more chat about it. I'm sick of hearing about it. It's overkill, isn't it? It's, a, it's going the like same way as Pacquiao Mayweather, isn't it? Where when it did come round, everybody were like, they weren't really bothered. It'd be like Kel Brook and Khan fighting next year. It's, it's overkill, isn't it? it? It's went on too long. Yeah, fans start getting bored. Yeah, fans start getting bored, bored about it and and I think it's heading that way now. If it doesn't happen next year, I think it's done. I don't. I, I, I'm not, if it doesn't happen next year, I'm not really interested. I'd still watch it, but I wouldn't be watching it with the same... Because what one's had a draw and one's been beat. So, do you see where I'm coming from? Yeah, I mean, I think it's more on Joshua. More on Joshua to make the fight. Because... Of the wilder situation, what they dragged out, and we know no, they dragged that out and avoided that situation. And um, where Fury's had elite, listen, he's had a few marking time fights since he's come back, but at least he's he's got in there with Wilder a couple of times, you know, and give us good career defining so called fights, yeah. Give us good fights where it's been 50 50, where you like, you don't know who's going to win. And we've not had that. We've not had that from, well, Joshua Rees 2 was like that. But, well, we thought it was going to be like that until we turned out as fat as a pig. But, fat as a pig, I'm, Mitchell, in mum. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think it's, um, you, we do need to see. Is, I think, like, that fight and the Spence Crawford needs to happen next year. Otherwise, boxing is going to go further and further down the pan. It's already slowly, slowly slipping, slipping away from big, big time mainstream stuff. And uh, it's only going to get, it's only, it's only going to get worse because UFC, they're just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and they're constantly making good, better, better fights. You know? Yeah. More and more interested. I know you're not a UFC man. No, I'm not, no. I've sort of, I've sort of gone off the UFC as well, but... It's like game you've got, isn't it? Let, let's just look at it from this aspect, yeah, right? UFC, yeah, have done a Fight Island, yeah, right? So they've done a few Fight Islands over in the Abu Dhabi, yeah, right? In um, is it Yaz Island, yeah, right? Why isn't, why isn't, the, why isn't someone in the Middle East like Dubai... Got a secure location to put boxing events on and throwing a few quid at it. I like Tom Box. Aspinall. You know Tom Aspinall. Yeah, he guy. I like him. I've met him a few times and uh, spent a bit of time with him. He's a nice kid, him, and his dad's lovely. And uh, as far as you, and it, he's UFC, and I think he'll win a world title eventually. 
But other than that, I don't really follow anybody. I don't... Uh... You know, in Wick Cauliflower Ears, that Russian guy, what's he called? Yeah, Khabib, yeah. Khabib. He looks a tough bloke, doesn't he? When you look at him, you think he's tough. Yeah. It's, but, uh, there's another one as well that's on. He's, it's rising up. There's a weight above him, and he can, can fight from fluctuate from the two weights, and he's a scary character, and they're building him right up at the minute. Cause, who's uh, that? It's, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Chimenev or something like that. But they're really, yeah, you, you, yeah, UFC. He's from the same part of the world that's, he's from, that Khabib's from, but they're proper giving him the push because they've got big, big followings and fan bases, you know? You're scared of me to death with this Chimenev story. Here. Chimenev, come see me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what, what do you want to? What do you? Uh, what do you want to see? What excites Russ then? What excites, what excites Russ then? me? Uh, Boxing wise, Callum Johnson against uh, Joshua Boatsy. That excites me. Uh, Arpa Jonas rematch. That excites me. Uh, me and Steffi Bull on cobbles. That excites me. Gets the juices flowing. I'll take him <laughs> down one and wrap him up. That excites me. Uh, Josh Whale against Gavin McDonald free a trilogy. That would excite me. Uh, but Gavin McDonald's shot to pieces now, isn't he? Fat as a pig Michelin man. Uh, I just like to see good fights. There's a lot of fights that we're not seeing, isn't there? I'd like to see Anthony Yard against Callum Johnson as well. I think that's a good fight. Callum Smith against Anthony Yard. I think that's a great fight as well. You, you could go across board with, with fights in England that are not happening for some reason or another because certain people don't do numbers on AFL. It shouldn't be about that. Why have we got Dylan White putting his name in the mix to fight all these big hitters at heavyweight, but yet he's already knocked back Joshua at Wembley for world title in a rematch. So why, why have we got Dylan White getting airtime off Sky and IFL and all this, when what he's achieved in the sport is very little, isn't it, really, compared to other people? Do you see where I'm coming from? Just to keep his name out there, Russ, if you think about it, he got knocked out in August. They've had the fight postponed with Pavek in, in November, where he's got the COVID, and now and now it, it's getting pushed back to, looks like, March now, yeah? And obviously, he's, he's out in... He's out in Portugal. I don't think he'd done him any bad, really, because that was a. I think he was fighting too soon, anyway. But mate, I mate, think it was just, it mate, was just to keep the point. Pardon? All this Portugal stuff, it's rubbish. All this about his slaving it out there in Portugal, training like a demon, is a Spartan and all that. What a load of bollocks! He's in Portugal, Portugal for tax reasons, right? That's why he's in Portugal. Let's fucking tell it straight here. He's in Portugal because he don't want to pay tax. That's why. Isn't that right, Dylan? So all this about, has he been in camp all year round and all that? It's a load of shit. He's like he's fat as a pig Michelin man in Portugal. He's there for tax reasons. Let's fucking have it right, mate. You know, all these people running around saying he's, he's in camp in Portugal and he's trained hard for it. It's just a load of shit. Yeah, but he's not, obviously he's not in He's not in camp now. He's probably ticking over, but he's not because he's not even got a date. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, exactly. They're just, men they're just mentioning all They're just mentioning all them names just to keep just to keep his name out there. Do you know what I mean? When if we Ortiz took him up on that offer, Dillian White would sh Dillian. If Lewis Ortiz took you up on your on your mouthy tweet that you put out or wherever it were video, you would literally fill your nappy. He'd fill his nappy, mate, if Lewis Ortiz said, let's get it on. He'd fill his nappy. It would be too far superior. Skills pay the bills, don't they? We all agree on that, don't we? Yeah. Ortiz may be knocking on a bit. And we know our Dillian likes to fight 40-odd-year-olds. Ortiz would take him to school. It's as so simple as that. He'd punch holes in him, mate. So would uh, so would Ruiz Junior as well, mate. An, an oh. in shape, an in shape one. An in shape Andy Ruiz would tear Dillian White a new arsehole. Yeah, uh, absolutely. After he's already had a new one fitted, 
after uh, Povetkin did him. I mean, not Povetkin not only did him, they had him, they, they carried him out, carried him out, mate. Do you know what I mean? He got iced. He were a corpse on the floor, mate. So I don't want to hear any of this Dillian White pay per view. Dillian White might not get another pay per view, you know, because how can they repackage him now if he don't fight Povetkin next? He's in a tight spot. If he don't fight Povetkin next, he's going to be known as the man that got iced by a 41-year-old. How can he possibly get another pay-per-view? He can't if he don't beat Povetkin next time, can he? They can't keep wheeling him out on pay-per-view when he's got a vacant British against Ian Lewinson on Mantelpiece. That is it. That's the Dylan White story. Knocked out by Joshua... Knocked out by a 41-year-old, and in between, he won a vacant British. That's the Dylan White story. Oh, and he's funny on, on IFL, uh, talking about curry, Sri, Lan Sri Lankan curry with, with Coogan. That is the story, isn't it? Dave White, Dave Allen took him took him to points. Dave Allen. Do you know, do you know what, Ross? Do you know what, Ross? If he get... If even if he if he wins the rematch, yeah, boy, and he scrapes past Povetkin, it's not really the opponents, really. There's not really decent opponents out there that's really pay per view fights. They'll find a way to make it pay per view because they always do, and you know the greed of them. But there's not. But, but yeah, if he gets knocked out again, if he fights Povetkin again and loses, right by knockout, he is done. So maybe he didn't want the fight, but maybe they put maybe they're putting it out that that Povetkin didn't want it. Maybe it's still a white whose arseholes fell out. Because let's have it right, he didn't want to rematch Joshua, and I don't think he wants some fist off Povetkin again. I think Povetkin's far superior skill wise. He's got more in his locker, hasn't he? Only thing he hasn't got is is the freshness, has he? That Dylan's got over him, and Dylan's not that fresh, mate, is he? Yeah, he's, but he's got more. Yeah, he's got the youth is more on his side. I, I get where Povetkin's, and he's gonna. Yeah, he's getting older and older and older. I mean, we don't know what he's taking, so we have got to bear that in mind, do we? I we mean, don't know what Dylan White's that. taking, do we? Do we, Matt? True, true, true. Is there any? Would, is there any drug testing for that fight? We don't know. Where's Dylan White's B sample? How, how many days has that been? Five hundred and odd, six hundred days or something. Where's this B sample, Dylan White? Come see me with it. Yeah, it don't seem to be getting told about drug testing, though, do we, with this fight? So, you see, it doesn't seem the uh, the interviewers ask these questions. But um, I just want to touch on saying as well what you, what you was going on about earlier about Callum Johnson and that. That, yeah. lot, that British light heavyweight mix now, right? That is that is a really exciting division. Very exciting. Yeah. Most exciting division out there at the moment. It's the best division out there. But in British boxing right now, you, light heavyweight is the best division out there. By a mile. But, yeah, by a mile. They, look how many competitive fights, you know. Yard, um, Callum Smith, Callum Johnson, Jose Burton, Boatze, Lyndon Arthur, the sixth there. That could all go into like a little round robin. At the the, the, there, mate. You forget, you're forgetting Craig Richards, who's just won the British title as well. You got to look at as well. I'm not, I'm not. Uh, I don't think he's he can mix it with a lot of them, you know. But he, he's in the mix, isn't he? He's in the mix. Well, well yeah, but you, yeah, but you, 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 say, you, yeah, but you say, you, you say, oh, I don't think he can mix it with him and that. But he's got, he's got better wins. He's, he's, but. It, his win against that Pitters the other night, that's better than any yard of Yard's wins. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. I just, th I just think we haven't seen enough of him. Do you know what I mean? Craig Richards. Um, do you know what, though? Do you know what, though, Rush? Yeah, right. He's had it tough, isn't he? he yeah, he has. He's, he's been in the B-side. He, he was a last-minute replacement versus Buglioni when he weren't really filled out to light every way. And then he, he's gone and beat Jake Paul when he was uh, Jake Paul when he was the opponent, and I just think he's been he's beat uh, Andre Sterling as well. He's a tough, tough, tough fighter. Jake Paul, you mean Jake Paul? Jake Paul, that's what I mean. Yeah, Jake Paul. So, and that pit, as you know, man. I mean, um, he's not really a power puncher, but who wants to fight a six foot six light heavyweight, mate? It's 
he was huge. At the, he was huge against Richards the, the other night. So I just I want to see him get a good opportunity, and I want to see him get in that mix as well because I think he deserves it. But and there's a few other fighters as well where in the English level was was going to make it. But they've got to make these fight. They, they, all these fights they're there to be made, Russ. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I just don't think he's, I don't think he's at that level of them others that Craig Richards. No offense against him, like he's had. That's, a... Yeah, that's 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 your opinion, but we're only gonna we we're only gonna find out. Yeah, if the fight. The each, yeah, so if you put him in mix, that's seven. Willie Hutchinson eight. It, they could all these guys could fight at one seven five. Uh, Lerone Richards could he fight at that way? Yeah, you could. Yeah. They could all get work it so they fight at one seven five. So what? What's that nine? You could easily pick ten, get ten of them, all fighting at that weight, and, and you have some good fights, couldn't you? There's plenty you know of good, there's plenty there's good fights. Be, you're not getting about it fights. Yeah, it looks like Callum Johnson's is on the outside looking in, really, doesn't he? Now, because it's we all right when his uh, own success, isn't it? You know what? Dropping Beterbia or Beta Beaver, whatever you want to call him, dropping him has not done him any favours, Callum Johnson, because everybody knows he can bang and he can fight and he, and he gets up. He got dropped by a massive punch and he got up. Nobody gave him a chance going out there and he fought well. So I know he got knocked out, but he had a good, didn't he? And he's maybe now the bogeyman in Britain for that weight, do you think? Yeah, but he's... Yeah, but, he, but he's sort of above the British. He's, he's, he's sort of European fringe world level, really knocking on, and he wants probably to get himself a, a um, wants to, wants himself another title shot. But I mean, I think they're just going to try and put him on the shelf, leave him on the shelf, and then just try and catch him at a, not one of them late notice five weeks, four weeks. For Barazzi to, to, to try and feed him because he's not really wanted there, is he? He's not got he's not got a contract with Matchum, and even though Matchum don't have contracts with some a lot of their fighters, I mean, they only he's he's sort of in a position where you and Savannah not, have got contracts with Matchum. Yeah, but a lot of them a lot of them haven't. But oh, they're sort of. Yeah. Yeah, but sort of a lot of them are needed, but but where he's not needed at the minute, or he's probably too expensive to put on, it's Eddie Earnville like, well, I haven't I haven't got to give him a fight. I haven't got to give him a fight. So you don't really want to know. So um they only get contracts to people when they want to keep they don't want them to go elsewhere. And when they're not I think when they're not bothered that bothered about you, there's I don't know if you're a loyalist, you know, like you know, you Kel Brooks and people like that. They haven't got mm. contracts with Matchum, but they stayed loyal, didn't they? Yeah. Dave Allen never had a contract with Matchum, and he, he was frightened to go fight on other shows, you know, like a Warren show, because they feel that if it don't work out, they can't go back. So sometimes fighters, they get into situations where Matchum, they pay you on night, don't they? No matter what it is, you get paid on night. And, uh, I can explain it. You know you're going to get paid. And the told horror stories, aren't the fighters, about, oh, if you go to all the promoters, you'll not get paid. And so you get comfortable, don't you? So, and Eddie knows if they're comfortable with him, so he don't give him a deal. But them who we don't want to go elsewhere, he pins them down. It's like Yui and Savannah are tied, aren't they, to match you? But, uh, it's, it remains to be seen if Eddie can deliver for these people, doesn't it? I suppose. He needs to needs to deliver now, doesn't he? He couldn't deliver for Kel Brook. No, Kel Brook should have moved on years ago. He should have been at one 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 five four after the Golovkin fight, or even before the Golovkin fight, he should have been at one five four. And um he should have gone to America, but that's another story. I mean it's um all that they kept saying about the weight issue with Kel Brook and all that, and then they go drain him down to 147. Yeah, he just kept he's about tasting in my mouth. And then years eight years later, he's still fighting at 147 at a weight that they said were dangerous to us, didn't they? That's oh, the yeah. problem. I've Eddie Earn said, my fighters are like my family. This is my new best friend. 
these are my family. When well, yeah, you're draining them down and putting them in dangerous situations and they're getting the faces smashed in. Literally, faces caved in. And yeah, he's telling us, my fighters are like my family. Do you know what I mean? He's giving it all that. This is a problem I have with it. Do you know, little things like that. They say that, and I think, he just said that about that fighter there, that it's dangerous for him to fight at that weight again. This is why we're moving up. Too dangerous. And then fight after the draining back down. I'm like, can I believe what I'm seeing or hearing? That it's ruthlessness and everybody's allowing it to happen. The trainer, Dominic Ingle. Yeah, what we'll do, we'll just do it weight correctly. Well, you just said that it's dangerous for him to fight at 147, so you're moving up. Kel's really a super middle, they were telling us. He's a beast. But we're going to fight at middle, but he's really a super middle. He's sparse frotch. Then they take him back down to 147 and get his face caved in even more. Ah, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. And people are allowing it to happen. And then they've got Dominic Ingalls got the brass neck to come on YouTube doing interviews about it and saying, oh, now, who's looking out for these fighters? Do you know no what I mean? one. They just do what they just, listen. They, listen, it's 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 money before it's money before health. It's you money know, before health. You know what I mean? What's going to happen is, in years to come, when Penny drops, Kel Brook will get up one morning. He'll look in that mirror, and he'll say, "Do you know what? Why did I allow that to happen? I could have been a runner bean." And now all I've ended up doing is arguing with Mr. Bean. That's what's going to happen. But speaking of Mr. Bean, a.k.a. Roy Cropper, I know you're watching, Bean. But no, I feel sorry for Kelbrook, and he's finished now. Could you imagine him against Beefy Smith at 154? It'd be a bloodbath now, wouldn't it? Possibly not, it would have been, yeah. As soon as they get touched the on that face... Hmm? As soon as he gets touched on that face, he just don't want to know, does he now? Yeah, well, yeah, it, it looks that way, doesn't it? It, it looks like his punch resistance is all gone. Sad, really, man. I, I, I hate, I hate seeing fighters just go on too long, especially, especially fighters who haven't fulfilled their, um, fulfilled their, what you call it, fulfilled their talent and. Yeah, potential. That's it. I feel the potential and just smoke and milk. It's just been, it's just not been a clear run for him, is it? You know what I mean? And it, it does piss me off as well. Yeah. Like, even before, maybe before the Golovkin fight or even after that Golovkin fight, I should have just moved into 154, had a rest and then gone and just vacated against Spence, you know, vacated and didn't bother. Yeah. Who's your top five pound for pound, Mark? What in a minute? Yeah. Mm. Uh, you'd have to go. Um, you have to go with Canelo. You'd have to go with. Errol Spence. Mm, yeah, yeah. You got to look at his resume now at world weight. He's nearly cleaned up at world weight, and he yeah. regardless. Plumber division, welterweight yeah. as well. Well, yeah, he's beaten all the top. He's beaten world. He's beaten Paul. He's beaten Garcia. He's beaten world class fighters time and time again. Well, we have to put yeah. Khabib in that mix as well. We we put Peturbiev. Peturbiev, whatever it's called. Um, we put him in that mix because he's knocked everybody out. Who he's fought, he's iced everybody. Is he? Well, he's had about 15, 14 fights or something, but they've all been iced, haven't they? Yeah, I'll put I'll, 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 I'll put him in there. Maybe he needs another win. Maybe he needs another standout win. Yeah. He needs another standout win. But the, really, at one seven five at world level, there's not really it's sort of thinning out a bit there now. You don't see um, Camo calling him out, do you? Beat a beef? No, they know not. Russ, they know not too, mate. It's, you don't. It's too dangerous that fight. He's he's still he's still he's still. Uh, Got miles. He's still got miles to fulfill. You know when he's bad, Bob Ashley safe. He had big pillar gloves on, and they were lifting him up in the air with body shots, uppercut. You know, uppercuts to the stomach. He yeah. was in the stomach, and Bob Ashley safe said he were lifting him up in air. 
with big pills <clears throat> on as well. Every every punch, even the jab, even just a simple jab, or oh, don't it? It's just every every punch has got evil intention, but he's he's got that Eastern European where he's Eastern European style where he's technically technically really good as well. Sets things up properly, sets traps. Usyk beat him, didn't he? In uh, amateurs, didn't he? Yeah, twice, twice didn't he? And, he? and and he beat Kovalev twice as well, didn't he? Beat a beef. Yeah. Kovalev as well. So he, he's um, a fighter in it, but Usex must be great if he's done him. So yeah. for me, Usyk, and Usek and Canelo at men at the moment for me. <laughs> Usyk, Canelo, I think the, the uh I don't know if you can put Peter a Fury rates Usyk, you know. Hmm? Peter always goes on about Usek, how good he is and that and yeah, he's a quality fighter, isn't he? And that, and look how he rides punches and all that. They, they're proper big Usyk fans, Furies. It's the skill, isn't it, Ross? It's the skills. That... Yeah, it's the skill set he's got, isn't it? His footwork's phenomenal, isn't it? Mm. Mickey Fields Talking said his footwork's shit, didn't he? <laughs> Mickey, bless him. Who Mickey, said that? Mickey had more messages about you saying Usyk's footwork's terrible. <laughs> No, Jesus. I know, I know. I think Mickey got that wrong, but we're all allowed to get things wrong, aren't we? Everybody's got opinions, aren't, aren't they, I suppose? Yeah, everyone's got different opinions. Yeah, everyone's got different opinions and how we see different fighters playing that or who we, who we, who, 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 a close decision, who we preferred, what sort of work we like from whatever fighter and different things you like to look for and stuff like that, so... Would you um, would you would would you see happening now with um, with Matchroom and Sky now? Do you see them renewing their deal, or do you, because we haven't seen we haven't seen or heard anything where they've renewed their three year deal yet? Because it's running out this year, isn't it? running out next year, yeah. Yeah, I'm hearing that there's going to be big changes at Sky. That's all I'm hearing. Well, already we've got Adam Smith. He's gone from rough to rugged to. 180. This is why we love this spot of darts so much, Johnny. He's a dart man now, and he been. Look, they're all scrambling for position, aren't they? You've got a lot of people that are putting themselves out there on social media every Sunday after fights, aren't they? Coldwell, Johnny Nelson. It, the, 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 they've become like the regular guys on IFL. It's like the same old people being interviewed, isn't it? Predictable. What's going to happen the next day? We're after after a big fight. Who they're going to get on instead of getting on different people for different opinions? Yeah, they will get the same old people on who are, who are going to talk company line, and it's called brainwashing the fans. And this is why I have to say my bit. The brainwashing fans with the same old rubbish, aren't you, Dave Caldwell, Johnny Nelson, Tony Bellew? You know what I mean? The same old people spewing the same old things. And then you've got people going on about why so and so got beat and this and that and blah de blah. They need to people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. That's how I look at it. And <laughs> what sort of changes do you, do you see other promoters getting on there? Do you yeah, would, would... I can see I can see Sky still working with Match because they've got darts, aren't they, and snooker and pool and all that crap. I can still see Match and working with them, but I can see the dates being shared out. But I don't think Eddie's really that bothered anyway because he's got the zone over here, hasn't he, now? So I think you're going to see people panicking with the zone over here and wanting to jump ship. That's what I see happening. And I see, mm. I could see Sky even reducing dates that they've got. I mean, they might not even have a budget for it. I mean, they're supposed to be struggling, Sky, aren't they? They're offering all sorts of deals online. Have you seen them? Deals? Oh, I haven't seen yet. Not yet. I'll check it out, though. All you people, right, they've got Sky. If you ring up and tell them, it's like my auntie rung up and said, oh, we're, not, we're not happy with this. We're not paying for this. And they, they, they had the grievances and they came back to them and they halved the bill from 84 a month to 42 and they threw them in loads of extra stuff because they just want to keep you, you know, tied down for another year. But, uh, so if you've got Sky, ring up and tell them you're not happy with it. Say, I'm not happy. They'll half your, half your bill. Or tell them you're cancelling. Say, no, no, I'm not happy. I'm cancelling. They're bending over backwards. 
bending over backwards, mate. BT yeah. as well, BT Sport as well, doing the same. They're trying to keep people up, aren't they, on it? Do you yeah. see? Do you do you do you see Joshua resigning with Sky and Matchroom? Yeah, I see Joshua staying with Sky. That, I see I see him, him and um, him and Sky as one unit, and I see Joshua getting his own own dates. You know what I mean? Like Eddie's Eddie's been in charge before with dates, but I see I see Joshua uh, getting Sky dates. That's what I see happening. I do, yeah. And I see other dates getting shared out. I mean, why why couldn't they give people like, I don't know, Carl Greaves, Joe Gallagher, why don't they give him dates? He's got a promoter's license, hasn't he? Give them date, give them a give them a give them two dates each. Dennis Hobson gave him a couple of dates. Uh share them out, share the love. Give Eddie earn ten dates. Uh, give, give Joshua two dates a year. And get other eight to four of the promoters, give them two dates each, see if they can perform. They know they've got to perform, so they'll put good fights on. We don't have to have world title fights, but if we're going to have an area level fight on, let's see a guy who's area level. Give me another guy who's area level. If we have a British, if we have a British, if we have a British title fight, let's see somebody else who's British level instead of a British title fight against some stiff. Let's see. 50 50 fights like Eddie promised. Eddie promised 50 50s through pandemic, but apart from Cheeseman and Eggington, Jonas, Harper, what, what's really been a 50 50? Courtney against Ball, what, 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 like Rachel Ball, were it against Shannon Courtney? That were a 50 50, wasn't it? But there hadn't been that many 50 50s, I don't think, do you? Not too many. There's been good up. There's been a good few upsets though, which I've quite enjoyed. To be fair, good good upsets that have catch caught fighters cold and exposed certain fighters. Who have, got exposed, didn't they? Yeah, not just that. No, yeah, not just him. No, not just because yeah, he was under. He was he was expected to win, and it was meant to be a routine defense. But it obviously didn't work out like that. But just other folks like Joe Laws and just just getting smashed up and. A few other, a few other underdogs that have uh, that come in last minute who were ready, and just all these other hype jobs just getting found out, really. So MTK as well, I, I, you give them five dates a year, Russ. I'm sure they deliver good competitive yeah. fights. MTK, give them a few dates, but they put their stuff on YouTube, don't they? Yeah, but I'm sure that they, yeah, but I'm sure that they do. They would go be above and beyond if they got sky. If you've got sky dates, they'd want to put on the best best fights to get more dates. It's, yeah, it's, it's a simple. They'd have some. It's like it's a it's a it's a um, it's a it's an outfit that would be hungry to impress. And tell you what, if they got a few more sky dates and they put on competitive fights and do good numbers, sky are going to want them back. Some it does. Need, it needs it needs freshening up now, and especially when Joshua was coming out before. Christmas and saying, listen, don't listen to what Eddie says, blah, blah, blah. blah. If the fights are with you, you're only going to happen when I say it's going to happen. And Eddie says a lot of things and my management's talking to MTK now. I think cracks are starting to appear in, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I was just about to say, do we see a few chinks in the armour? Well, absolutely. And especially when, especially when the, contract, the contract's coming up. The sky ain't sky put so much money into Joshua, they ain't gonna wanna let they ain't gonna wanna let him go. But if he says, Well, look, I ain't I don't want to resign with Matchroom and and that, what's Sky gonna do? They sort of backed into a corner and say, Well, they're gonna wanna keep him there, ain't they? Because they want they wanna be part of this fury fight. If that if if Sky don't resign him, what a disaster that'd be if Joshua went and done the fury fight on BT. Yeah, imagine if Joshua and Fury fought on BT Sport. There's, there's, but uh, the, the funny, the ironic thing is, there's nothing to stop him doing that. If he's not, if he's not got a contract with Sky, there's nothing to stop unless unless he's got to fulfil, if unless it's a yearly contract or a fight or a, a certain amount of fights. You know, there's nothing to stop him doing that because you know BT are going to want to they. If they'd be sniffing around, you know what I mean, and they'd give them a good deal, a pay per view sort of platform sort of deal. Do you think, Mark, that 
Joshua wants all the money for himself and he's trying to get rid of Eddie. You think, do you think the jostling for position? Do you think the Fury fight, it, it's going to happen, but they're going to have to wait to see what happens with this Sky thing because there's, there's something bubbling, isn't there? And I'm getting excited. Could Eddie end well, up with that? Ooh, Joshua just lost me. Well, so, so, so to say you, you do a big fight like the Fury fight and it's a 50 50 split, yeah, and everything's down the middle, yeah, right? And it, all of Joshua's money is six, say it's 50 million, say, Russ. Pro, promoter takes 20%, yeah, they do it on an 80 20 split, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if if it if it every before Joshua gets paid, if it's fifty million, the promoter to twenty percent, promoter takes ten million. The fight's big enough as it is. There's no there's no, what else can how else can you promote it? It's it doesn't need more promoting. It's like Mayweather Pacquiao, not on that level, but it, it just doesn't need it just doesn't need more promoting. Everyone knows what sort of fight it is and it's, a, it's the fight everyone wants. So, I mean, why give why give Matchroom 20% and 10 million when you could just keep that money for yourself or spread it around your team and get people get people being the front man for your team and get that, pull that Freddie Cunningham to be a front man or whatnot or just wheel him out. Brown bread Fred. Yeah, it, yeah, it just it doesn't. It, I mean, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna come sooner or later. And it just stays a few. He might look at what Canelo's done and might think, oh, I might just stay a few free agent and might just uh, to just it just back yourself. Do you know what I mean? And and whatnot. What do you think about the situation we uh, Eduardo and Canelo, where Eddie's coming out in press conferences and saying? I work for Canelo, he's my boss. Do you feel that he's putting himself into that situation the, and making himself look better than De La Hoya? Because you never heard De La Hoya come out with stuff like that, did you? No, but De La Hoya had a long-term contract with Canelo, didn't he? So he had a long-term... And that, that relationship was... That, there was stuff going on behind the scenes and that relationship with Fratchard. Maybe Canelo got a bit too greedy. Maybe Golden Boy were taking too much more money. But obviously, with, with Eddie coming in here, just say, look, this is what you're going to get. This is how we're going to do it. And everything will be transparent. And I think probably Canelo will be happy with that. I mean, they've already talking about doing a doing a, a couple fight deal now with the zone. Where he's going to fight in February now. He's going to fight end of February. He'd do it a mandatory against that yield dream back in Mexico and then do it like a Saunders fight in May, I think. That's what the rumours going around is. I've heard he's been the... like fucking Oscar De La Roy at the moment. What's, what's that? I've heard he's been doing some really heavy partying. Been going on, yeah, for, well... about, going on for about four months, I reckon now. I mean, seriously fucking going missing for days on end. Man after me. Yeah, well, he's um he's always had them problems, isn't he? You know, what I mean, you, you, there's things out on YouTube where he's absolutely out of his head doing interviews and he's out drinking and that. But obviously, losing losing Canelo, mate, uh, you know that's a it's a lot of money you're losing there, isn't it? He's probably making five to to seven million quid minimum every time Canelo fights. Do you know what I mean? Or, or on their previous deal. But it's still a, a chunk of revenue. Uh, you, you don't replace someone like that, do you? No. Oh, that's the Golden Boy are on back foot now, aren't they? Without Canelo. Yeah, they, they've got a few other fighters, but they've not got that big marquee name like him. They've not got that big mar big marquee, and it's um, it's going to take a while to build up the. Virgil Teases and the Ryan Garcia's of this world. Good quality fighters, but they're not on Canelo's level. Do you know what I mean? So, do you think that Eddie's looking for life beyond Joshua? Looking at Canelo and trying to get some going in America. Do you think you think he's looking for life after Joshua? Do you think Eddie knows deep down that Joshua don't beat Fury? He must know that. He must know his boxing, surely. Yeah, I think so. He's not never going to come out and say, he's, he's not never going to come out and say that Joshua ain't going to knock out Fury, is he? Let's be honest. He's not going to come out and say that. But probably deep down, yeah, prob 
probably knows that. And I don't, it, he will know by now if Joshua's going to resign or not. Because if they're stalling about resigning a new deal or not being taught, if he's not talking about it in the media, then, you know, serious changes are going to happen. Yeah. It's, I mean, it, re- really, I mean, what, what, what else does he need? Other, I don't know if a Coley signed with Hearn or not. I ain't too sure. I mean, they'd have to work together with that, but I'm not. I don't, I'm, you, there's all sorts going on behind the scenes. I'm sure there is, but yeah, eventually, I think. He, he, to be fair, like see with the card that uh, he put on with Pulev and that, it was mainly all Joshua's fighters on the undercard as well. So, what does he need? What does he need them for? All them fighters that he's got from EIS. Lottery yeah. fighters. Yeah, yeah, they've got it all figured out, haven't they? They've got it all yeah. figured out, mate. The, the rat sees of this world, so... You don't know him. I don't rate him, mate. I don't rate him. I think he's overrated. I think he's very well, overrated. I think Callum Johnson punches him upside down, mate. Yeah, at this particular time, I think he does as well, but... He needs to start getting matched now, doesn't he? He needs to. They need to start. Well, matching. He needs to get him over, mate. It's, we're, we're we're going into 2021 here, and he was at 2016 Olympian. So he needs to get get moving, doesn't he? Really, Boatsy, because all we're hearing is a lot of hot air. That's all we're hearing. That it's all it's all hot air, mate. That's how I look at it. <laughs> Robin Reed won a world title in '96, right? He was a '92 bronze medalist. He was a world champion in '96. Robin Reed. So when we're we going to see Boatsy roll the dice and go have a fight, go away for a moment and test yourself. Robin Reed went to Italy, and he knocked champion out, world champion WBC belt in Italy. We a body shot as well. Did him with a body shot. I want to see Boatsy roll the dice. Go to America and fight winner of Joe Smith against that Vlas. So, is it where where he's called? They fight for vacant WBO, don't they? That's the route that they're going to go, Ross, isn't it? Yeah, that's what they're they're going to to pick an easy pickings one, aren't they? Yeah, that's the route that they're going to go. Fight for Turbia, like poor old Callum Johnson, who really rolled the dice and went out there and said, You know what? I'll have it with Beta Beef. Who's a killer? Big, big. He's got the highest KO ratio of all the world champions in the present day today. Every fight he's had, he's knocked everybody out. Wilder can't even say that no more, can he? No, he's 14 out of 14. So. Oh, he's, he fought, I thought he fought, he fought, yeah, he's coming up for his 15th fight. I thought he were about that. Well, he's knocking on a bit though, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Time, his time's not on his side. But like I said, are they all waiting for him to get old? Because I don't see Canelo or Boazzi calling him out, do you? No, I don't. You got B, you got B, you got Bibble as well, who no one really talks about, but I mean, still, still, um, still need to see a bit more. Callum of him. Johnson has said they said they take that fight, didn't they, to Eddie Earn? Eddie, yeah. Earn, would you take the fight? They went, yeah, we'll take it. Joe Gallagher said in a heartbeat, we'll take that fight. So why aren't why aren't they giving Callum Johnson his dues? Why not? Why aren't he getting slots? Why? What's he done wrong? What has he done wrong? His only defeat is against the biggest puncher in world boxing. At this present day, the biggest pound-for-pound puncher in world boxing is Arta Beaterbeef. Callum Johnson dropped him in that fight. It were a life and death. We class them as life and deaths, don't we? Even though Beaterbeef won, it's a life and death, wasn't it, for him, for the rounds yeah. he went. So why, why aren't they getting behind Callum Johnson? I can't get my fucking head around this. I can't get my head around it. I can't get my head around it. There's, there's, there's not the what the, but he don't, he don't really, he don't really push the needle over here, does he? He don't really, he, he's not really got a, a big fan base. He's never, he's never been built as he properly. Let's be honest, yeah. From the stock, for the since he's oh, turned. Oh, you don't see IFL giving him any airtime, Callum Johnson, do they? I, I don't think none of them uh, Joe G fighters are hanging out mm-hmm. at back of IFL or bo- or boxing. So, so they might do it on interview when they've got fights, but you can, you don't constantly see them like you see Dylan White, Dave Allen, 
Shannon Courtney. Another thing, oh, while we're on it, Shannon Courtney, why ain't anybody mentioning anything about the tweets that she'd been, that have come out about she's been saying? Did you see some of them tweets, how vile they were? Yeah, I see it. Nobody does that at time. Coogan Cassius loves the story, doesn't he? And it's his best, it's his busy mate, isn't it? Or whatever. Why ain't Coogan interviewer saying, Shannon, about these tweets here that you put out, a bit racist. You know, why why ain't why ain't he asking asking her about that? Why? Why why are they saying that she got hacked? It was it was seven years ago before anybody knew her. No, who, who would have wanted to hack her seven years ago? Eight years ago. Nobody's saying a word, but Joe Gallagher came out with a comment that he got back to front and he had to come out and apologize, didn't he? But they never said no about Joshua's text to uh, to uh Eddie Chambers about the black no. superior race and all this and Robert Mugabe and all that nonsense that you were chatting. But yeah, they when it's on boots on other foot, they don't have to explain themselves. But when they want to turn it on other people, they have to come out and apologize and this and that, or they don't want to work with him. I just don't agree with it. it there's got to be fair play down the line. Shannon Courtney needs to come out. She's come out and put a statement out, but it were a classic a statement, but not giving any giving it airtime and not commenting on what she'd said or what she would apologise him for. Did you see the statement? It was a PR-friendly statement. It was written by someone else. Who, the management must have, must have written it out. And well, did they think we're all thick, right? We've got Terry Trappendama there. He's a, he's a big cheese in banking in London. They deal with this kind of thing all the time. Rico works for a massive uh, marketing company. They did Man City deal, he's called Rico's company, you know, Puma. Mm. They were involved with that deal. So these kids, these kids that I know in industry, they know they know what, what, what's, what's being said. They're not thick. People are not stupid. That statement told you nothing. It just nipped it in mud. That's all it did. But they're not getting it airtime, are they? they? They don't want to give it any airtime. But like I said, they turned on Joe Gallagher, didn't they? Just like that. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, everybody else gets a free pass, don't they? If you're in the great, if you're on the gravy boat down south. If you're from the south, you're all right, aren't you? You can say what you want. If you're from up here, you, you, you trek like a leper. I think so. I think so. I think I think Joe Gallagher's an easier scapegoat, Russ, because I think he's probably difficult to deal with behind the scenes. He's not easy to... He's I've been a massive easy. critic of Joe Gallagher's over years, but I'm team Joe G now for a simple reason. Carter Callum Smith has had massive, massive, massive money. He's a multi-millionaire, Callum Smith, you know, on mm. a massive scale. And he's been navigated... To all through all the levels, and he's achieved a hell of a lot, hasn't he? And made millions of pounds, and he's got no miles on clock. Yeah, he's got miles on clock from last fight, but he's gone in against the pound for pound best in the world. So, and that's what the sport's about, isn't it? Really, we can be critical about Joe Gallagher's fighters where they've had rematches. Maybe they shouldn't. I don't think Quala deserved that Linares rematch, did you? I didn't think Paul Smith deserved the the Abraham rematch and on what grounds. But but the, no matter what, Joe Gallagher's got his men there, and he got them into position. They've gone through rankings and they've done it the old school way. They've gone through all the levels. So we have to give Joe Gallagher credit, mate. We have to give him credit for what he's done. And how long's he been in sport since he was ten? What is he? Fifty two. 42 year in game. So you like to think that he does no game, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, Cam, Cam Smith's career has just been, I mean, it's been pretty uh, smoke and mirrors, really, when it comes to world level. I, never I think don't think right. he's finished yet, Callum Smith. I think if he comes back and he goes to light heavyweight, now that he's had a defeat, the shackles might come off and he might just start icing people like he was doing. Because he ran through that division, didn't he, at domestic level, didn't he? Yeah. Super middle. He, he was blowing everybody away, wasn't he? He might be a different different lad now he's had that fight against Canelo. He might, he might 
It might you uh, re reinvigorate him. I don't know. We all have bad days at office, don't we? We can't. I don't think we can set about his performance because he's in there with somebody who want allowing him to do that. Sometimes you just come up against somebody and say, "Do you know what? He was just too good for me." And when you can say that, I think it says a lot about a person, do you? Yeah, I do think Canelo was too good, but at the same time, he handled he this got... well as well, didn't he, Callum? Pardon? I thought he handled it with a bit of class in his interviews and that. You could see yeah. what got up on that inside and that. It, it's not nice, is it, when you've been set about by somebody? But it's boxing, isn't it? I'll, do you know what? Though I just thought he got horribly exposed, Russ. Really, really exposed. And I know Canelo. Was... What's he do against Canelo? Aren't you? I mean, he's best in the world, isn't he? I know, but just exposed against Mayweather. Look what Mayweather did to him. No. I know, but we're talking about we're talking about different fighters in different times in there. Can Canelo was a really green fighter where Callum Smith's the same age as Canelo, and you'd I just I just we after what because I stayed up and watched the Callum Smith Canelo fight, and I was just I was just disappointed that he wasn't more competitive. I didn't. I didn't never fancy him to win the fight. I thought he'd actually get stopped, but I was just disappointed. He, there was just no. There was just no adjustments. There was no adjustments from him, and there was not. There was. There's not much. There weren't much feints going on. There was to adjust. Don't worry. That's that's the beauty of it. If you watch the fight, you can see that he took everything off Callum. He took everything off him, and he made him fight his fight. And that's what great fighters do, isn't it? Canelo is a great, he's going to go down as an all-time great. He's going to go down in the Sugar Ray Robinson mould. That's why I, I think he's that good. You know, somebody where nobody, nobody's got an answer to it, to what he's got. He, had, he, he can do everything, can't he? He can, he can do everything. He's the complete fighter in here today. What we're seeing now is somebody's really special, do you think? Yeah, it's... it's... It's someone who's just grafted and grafted on his craft and just practiced and practiced on different things every day. Do you know, like every day, obviously you have breaks out of the gym and that, but just every day, head movement, just the jab, the speed, just everything, like ring generalship, you know, do you know what I mean? Practicing old things and sparring over and over and over and over again. He's just grafted, isn't he? Did you watch you know Ryan I mean? Rhodes fighting, right? You know, Ryan Rhodes used to be one of my favourite fighters. He, I thought he, he were going to be a pound-for-pound pound superstar at Ryan Rhodes years ago. I watched him fight Canelo, and I would have liked to have seen them fight when Ryan were at his peak and that and that, that Canelo, because that Canelo weren't a peak Canelo. But he dealt with Ryan, didn't he? Ryan said he, he said he's really good, him. He were really good, but he dealt with Ryan. But I would have just liked to have seen a peak Peak Ryan Rhodes fight him, fight that version of Canelo. Do you know what I mean? As Canelo were coming through, but uh, he's a surgeon, man. Canelo, he's like a surgeon, mate. Honestly, what he did with Callum Smith is he chopped him down, didn't he? He took his he took his left off him, his left arm off him, didn't he? He kept hitting him on arm all the time. Did you see? Yeah, it was, it was grotesque, weren't it? The injury after the, after oh. the fight, unbelievable. I just expected more from Cat. I just expected more from Callum Smith. I know he took away certain attributes, but you know, like when you've got when you've got that much reach and that on him, and I just didn't see no. Do you know what gives Canelo problems, Russ? Side to side, that side to side slip movement, and I know Callum Smith's not really a slick sort of fighter, but that's the sort of fighter that gives Canelo problems and someone who can adjust and. Got got a lot of uh, got a lot of Arsenal to their game, you know. So, um, it, do, you, do you know what? Watching that fight, it got. It, it, by the ninth round, I was bored watching it because it was just one way. It was just one way traffic turning into just two one sided, you know. And I think size, so the, the natural size of Cam Smith probably kept him in there and probably made him hear that final bell, you know. Yeah, I, I just uh, I just hope he goes to one seven five. Can't be easy doing twelve stone at six foot three and a half, can it? No, yeah. 
but 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 then when you go when you start going up when when you when you start going up them um up to one seven five you got you got bigger boys in you you got bigger boys who pop that's his natural weight in it so he's it's the the size is gonna he'll have height from a lot of fighters but he won't be able to bully fighters will he no not that he's really bullied. He didn't really bully, bully John Ryder when you come think about it, didn't he? He really got bullied in that fight. So he got bullied by Canelo. So see how he looks at 175, but he don't. Be, he's not like he's going to want to really hang about Rust. You know what I mean? He's just been with Canelo now. He's not going to want to go back to British level or European level. He's going to want to get in with a fringe world class. Someone like a Sullivan. Oh, Smith, Joe Smith. What about Joe Smith against Callum Smith for WBO That's after Joe point. fights? If Joe wins that uh, WBO vacant belt, you know, in February. If Joe Smith it, wins that, I'd like to see Callum Smith in, Ju- in June against Joe Smith. If that if that sort of fight, if that sort of fight comes up, I'd go for that. If not, if I was Callum Smith or someone, um, I'd be looking for like a Sullivan Barrera or someone like that. You mean you mean like a tune up one seven five fight? Just somewhere who's just someone who's just passed their best Russ, who would give him a good fight and give him a good gut check, who would welcome him to the weight class. So I'm selling bread. Are you eating a full English? Um not exactly a full English, but a bit of scrambled egg, bit of tomato, a bit of bacon and sausage. I wish I could eat stuff like that. Oh, yeah. So I'll do a workout in a bit. So, um, but yeah, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna um, we're, we're gonna see. But I'd like to see Cam Smith more active now. I know he's got that injury. I'd like to see a lot of see fighters getting back to two, three times a year. All these took twice a year. Took, I don't think twice a year for Cam Smith. I think it's hurting us. To be fair, fighters don't fight. Fighters don't fight enough, and they don't. You know what I mean? They're, for someone like Clem Smith, three times a year, I know they go through these grueling training camps, but I don't know. What do you think? What do you, what's your opinion on it? I'd like to see think... Callum Smith go to 175 and go straight in for the world title at 175 on a, on, on, on what he's achieved so far in the sport. I think he's, he's, he's got to be in a world title next. Froch lost to Andre Ward, didn't he? Who, who, who was saying what best in the world, didn't he? So he came back and fought Bote. Well, I'd like to see Callum Smith come back and fight for a world title at 175. That's what I want to see. Why not? You know, Eddie Earn said he could, Eddie Earn said he could, could go to 175. <laughs> and everywhere he said he could go all the way through levels. Eddie said a few years ago, well, let's see him go up to 175. I think that's the logical move now. Eddie's got B- Eddie's got Bivo as well. Got Bivol. Why can't they put Bivol and Callum Smith? Let them get at it on 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 Sky Sports on a stacked pay per view card. Give them pay per view and stack it out. If they could put Dylan White, Povetkin pay per view, Callum Smith, Bivol's got to be pay per view on it. With right yeah. on the card, do you think they could put Jonas against Harper as chief support? What about Beefy Smith, okay. Eubank at one sixty? That's a great fight. That's a pay per view, isn't it? These fights are all on Eddie Earn's lap. So no wonder I give him loads of stick. He should make the fights. They're good fights, these man. Yeah, Beefy Smith's in no man's land as well, isn't he? He's been put in. Well, what can he do? What well, what has he done wrong? He went to he went to match them. They, they offered him this and that. We're go, we're going to get you this fight. We're going to get you that fight. All they've given him is Sam Eggington. They're talking about the Jesse Vargas fight, but really, what does Jesse Vargas do? Beefy. Pardon? A beef. Yeah. Jesse Vargas yeah. get blasted by beef. He's not big enough. Beefy can him away. But apart from it may be in a, a decent payday, Russ, what does that do for Beefy Smith? I don't know. I, I don't, there's something not right about why these kids are not getting chances. There's something not right about it. It's not so long ago we had Eddie Earn hanging out at back at Smith's in Liverpool. Now he's just gone cold on them all, hasn't he? Yeah, but they probably don't do great TV ratings, Russ. Um, 
really they can't sell out ticket they can't sell out arenas at the minute given to given the current circumstances he probably looks at it like what use are they that's, well, again, quite the, that's the way he probably looks at it Russ. do you know what i mean because it is a business as well unfortunately get fights in america then he should get them fights in america yeah yeah if they're getting fights in america right they'll get paid Josh Warrington, what's he doing with Josh Warrington? What's happening with him? Oh, but he's, he's, lost, lost, he's lost a, a year out of his career, isn't he? They're talking about Kenzu fighting, eh? Kenzu. Listen, there's a lot. There's talkers and the Smoky Bacon Walkers. They right. need to get. They need to get him out. They need to get him out. Really. Need really, really need to get him out and get him, get him fighting because Warrington is a um, quality fighter and he's proven in his son and he's done it the hard way. He's done it the hard way, so I've got, I've got a lot of respect for that. Why don't they put Adrian Broner in with Beefy Smith at one five four? Why not? Broner's a one forty, Russ. Come on, you got even. Uh, I'm not Broner's biggest fan, but Broner's a one forty. He's got about thirteen kids. Yeah. Jesus. He's a street kid, isn't he? So he's not, <laughs> he's, not <laughs> he's not your run of the mill normal sort of normal fighters. He's he's from the street, so and you don't lose that, do you? You don't you don't lose that sort of mentality, even if when you're getting interviewed and that, so Chris Eubank Jr. against Beefy Smith, Natasha Jonas against Terry Harper rematch, Chief Support on the pay per view. Eubank Beefy Smith pay per view must happen. It's a good fight, that. Jonas Harper, Callum Johnson Boatsy. That's maybe not a pay per view, but it's a sky headliner on a non pay per view, or it's a Chief Support, isn't it, on a pay per view? Do you think? That fight, is, that fight is a sky headline fight. Yeah, 200 grand a piece. Give him 200 grand a piece and let him get at it. What's up with that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Put it on a pay-per-view, achieve support on a pay-per-view. Beef it against Eubank. Sky Sports pay-per-view, 20 quid. Callum Johnson against Boatsy. Chief support. What's up with What's wrong with that? You know, Callum Johnson needs to get him for that European title fight, really, to be fair, Russ. Yeah, but even if he wins that, he's still not going to bring Boatsy to the table. If Boatsy has got no arsehole, what, what, what's the problem? Is Josh, does Joshua want to guide these fighters that he's managing through choppy waters and, um, and not accept challenges along the way? I don't know. Is, is that what Joshua's like? Very calculating, because... They thought they'd got away with it with Andy Ruiz, didn't we? And we all slagged the fight, didn't we? And he got a good hiding, didn't he? He got exposed as probably a B-level fighter, Joshua. But he looks he looks A-level. You know, he's got the physique. He's got the teeth job. Mm. Looks the part. He's got a great story, hasn't he? Ex-drug dealer gangster. Made good and all that. Yeah, MBE, OBE, and fucking... They're pushing for him a knighthood, aren't they? So... It'll be somebody like that Sadiq Khan who gets him it. So he's got a story, but he's really B-level, Joshua, and he's not that good, is he? So let's be honest, he's, he ain't that good, is he? He's, 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 rele he's relevant in the current heavyweight scene and yeah. and top five in the heavyweight scene because the heavyweight scene is so poor. So poor. Take Tyson Fury out of the equation. And maybe you sec, you take them out of the equation, all the rest of them are just also runs, aren't they? It's like an eight, it's like an eight horse race. You've got two thoroughbreds and other eight, other six that in they're in it and they might have an odd good day, but they're not gonna beat the other two, are they? You know, like it's like that kind of division now, isn't it? You think? Yeah, I think Wilder's power gets him out of situations that no other fighter's power can. Where he's got the speed as well and the timing. Yeah, let me just give a shout out to uh, Crawford Ashley, the spiritual boxer YouTube. People need to watch his his videos if you want to learn about boxing. And uh, I'm going to be doing uh, some filming at his gym in New Year. Uh, so, hope you well, Crawford. 
I always have a good night when I go see Crawford. We always have a good laugh. <laughs> well, I'm gonna t- I'm gonna uh, do some filming over there and uh, get it all jazzed up, make it look good. That'll be next big thing we do with channel. Uh, people can say, "Okay, oh, Crawford Ashley has been retired years." Yeah, but so what? He's been there, seen it, and done it. Do you know what I mean? He's got a great story, and anybody's welcome on channel if they're a character. If you're a character, look, I have all, all characters on here, don't I? I have you on, don't I? You're a character. Look at Stig. He's another cabbie. We have cabbies on here. If you're a cabbie and you want to get on Porky's Corner, email me, porkycorner at mail.com. If you like boxing, everybody's welcome. But I'm, not I, sure if you can put, I'm not sure if you can put me and Stig in the same bracket, but... He's a, he's a cabbie, isn't he, like you? Is yours one of them black cabs? Yeah. 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 What make is what make are they them? It's like Chinese make. Chinese? Yeah. Chinese, yeah? Yeah, that's where they're making, yeah. I didn't know that. I thought they were made in England. Well, when you're next time you're in London and it gets back to normal, you'll see the cab. So when you're in Essex as well, you need to give me a room when you go and see Mark Tibbs, because I don't be too yeah. far away from Mark Tibbs. Next month. So you need yeah, to you, next month I'll yeah. come. And I'll take and uh, I take. There's the Turkish calf across the road there. That are good people. Yeah, I've but been in you, it. I've been in it. But if not, I'll take you to a pie and mash and show you what real bit of food. Mark, Mark Timson, yeah. I'll take you to some pie and mash porky with liquor. I said, all right. We ended up in a Turkish restaurant. He says, well, it's pie yeah. and mash. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they fetched up on you a lot down there, isn't it? Pie and mash. Yeah. Mate, grown up, lived lived off that stuff. Pie and mash is that all? Is it popular down there? Yeah. Do they have like proper pie and mash shops, or is it just like a yeah, cap- yeah, proper pie and mash shops? Oh, oh, dying right. out a bit. It's a dying out, but a dying. It's an Essex thing and an East London thing, but it's dying out in East London now. They they're sort of going in East London, but in uh, in Essex, uh, around here, there's still still good fight, good pie and mash shops. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, all right then. Uh, what do you think about the Don King situation with Dave Allen and that uh, Lovejoy? What, what what did you think happened there? What, what's your take on that situation? Um, I think I think that Lovejoy, he had a um, he thought he was a free agent when I think Don King probably. Uh, had him um, probably had him there's a there's probably a lot of fine print a lot of uh, small print in that contract contract that his lawyers didn't read and um, he still had uh, still had loopholes in that deal that's what I think happened and uh, I don't know if they sent him over just for that really I think obviously I love Jordan wanting to fight but yeah, he's, he's still he won't go away, really, Russ. Don King. But... Don King is like uh, Jason out Friday the Thirteenth, isn't he? That film. He's like him, and he? he just keeps turning up, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean he, he, that Lovejoy. I think Dave Allen would have set about him, really. To be fair. I think Dave Allen would have knocked smoke out Lovejoy. Mm-hmm. Got his in a top fifteen ranking, and when 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 it fell through. I think Dave knew that it that was probably the best chance he was ever going to get of going in top fifteen and being rele- being really relevant. I think when it fell through, I think a part of him had just had enough of boxing. That's what I think. And you can't really blame him when you're that close. When you know you've got a knockover to get in top fifteen, when you've really, really, he would have really blagged it into top fifteen, Dave Allen, money for the fought that night, wouldn't he? Yeah, if he'd have fought Lovejoy and stopped him and entered the top fifteen in the world. He would have, he would have had it off on him basically to get into that position. And I think cost that didn't happen. A part of him, like I just said, they probably just got pissed off with the sport. You know, it isn't sometimes about talent if you can get there by hook or crook. And we are having a lot of talent. You, you can blag it, can't you? And I, and I think that. He nearly pulled it off, and who knows? He might, he might even build his 
brand up even higher now, Dave, because he's a bit of a brand now, Dave. Do you know what I mean? I feel, Russ, do you know what? I feel for Dave and mate. Honestly, I feel for Dave and by them cunts down there in Essex. Fucking cunts, yeah. mate, a lot of them. Fucking putting him in fights, getting him smashed to pieces. Yeah, but it's, it's not just that as well. It's just the story when he's gone on that boxing social podcast and he's talking about the stories about how uh, Joshua just used to use, they just used to use him for sparring and just never pay him anything or give him expenses and just beat him, not beat him, basically beat him from pillar to post. You know what I mean? You know, it's the way, the way they used him up there in the EIS and yeah, he no, sparring. They don't pay anybody, Joshua, as tight as old. Don't pay no yeah, but you know, and like he was, it, the stories that he was telling on there, you can see why he's got a bit of a be, be in his bonnet about people yeah, like this. Yeah. yeah, of course he has, and he's and and too right, he should have a be in his bonnet about that prick. Fucking you, doing, them, everybody. Yeah, doing, all, doing all them rounds, Russ. Yes, doing all them rounds, traveling all that way, not getting no expensive, and yeah. McCracken is just to blame as well, mate. It's only yeah. three stops on train from where they live, Sheffield, though. Three stops on train, 20 minutes. So oh, that, then you've got to get a bus to Attercliff. So, yeah, I see where you're coming from, but he's allowed that to happen, so he's his own West enemy, isn't he? If he's allowed yeah. that to happen. So he didn't used to get paid for sparring Tyson Fury as well. So if, you, if you're going to if you're gonna uh, spar these people and not get paid, that's your own fault, isn't it? He might have been paid off Tyson recently, but when he were a Peter Fury fighter, he used to spar Tyson and Yui every day and you didn't get paid because you're there to learn, aren't you? Yeah, if you're there in the camp, it's, it's there. But And obviously Peter's training him, but McCracken was never going to train him and they're, they're using him They're using him just to, just as a piece of meat, basically. Basically, when, and when, when he... It, that, the interview was pretty good because he was like talking about going and going into Poo Dad's camp and and Klitschko's camp and they'd all look after you in their, their their camps. Do you know what I mean? And pay you pay you for your sparring and put well, the only did five days at Klitschko. Klitschko let him go after five days, didn't he, David? He asked him to leave after five days because he said he wasn't he weren't what they were looking for. But Dave had time of his life out there. It's a proper seven star. Michelin chefs and lot there, Michelin star chefs there. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Proper posh, posh place and unbelievable. You get looked after there. It's un unreal. And uh, but now they sent him packing, didn't they? After with fifteen hundred quid, bless him. But at least he's been an experienced, it, hasn't he? He'll maybe yeah. a bit too raw, I think, maybe to to last pace. And because they ask you to replicate a fighter, don't they? And if you're not going to replicate what they want you to do, you're no good to Vladimir. He's wasting his time, isn't it? But Vladimir went up and told him to his face that they were letting him go and all that. So you have to give them credit. They've got a bit of class, them Klitschko's. Yeah, exactly. And, and then uh, how you, you, and then you compare it to like going up and sparring Joshua in that and compared to what other places he's been. I'm sure he's got plenty of other stories. And then... And then you look at the way Eddie's sort of used him, abused him, putting him in with all teams. We, we spoke about it many times, but he's just been like, he's been constantly used and abused. And it's just like, he, he, he's at an age now, what is he, 28? You know what well, I mean? Miles on clock, can he, for 28, David? He's got miles on clock, can he? That's, yeah, it's, Kerry's on fighting, mate. By the time he's, by the three, four years down the line, he could have some serious CTE damage and be really punched on. He could even... No, mate. He, be, no, he can't speak. Yeah, but... He, nice and exactly. Oh, like that, like Riddick Bow, mate. Sounds like it. And, and what happens when you get to 50, 60 year old? Do you know what I mean? And that. No one gives a fuck about you then. So I can see why he's got... Um, I can see why he's, he's got a bee in his bonnet about it. And... That's an awful sport, isn't it, Russ? It's... Yeah, I feel for him in a way, but he's allowed it to happen, so he's only got himself yeah. to blame. Yeah. I, I, what I say to young fighters is this. Right, this is what I say to young fighters. Listen to your trainer. I always say that to him. Listen to your trainer because he knows best. So he's training you. He's seeing you every day. He knows you better than you know yourself. Trainers sit and watch everything you do. They don't just sit and watch you in the gym. They watch how you clean your teeth. They watch how you eat your dinner. 
they watch uh, your sleeping habits. They, they live, they run your life basically. They know everything about you. A trainer studies you. He doesn't just he studies how you tell a joke, how you tell a conversation, how you drive. They study everything about you, and the, and they'll and they'll they know what what buttons to push in you. So whoever were giving Dave Allen advice when he were taking these fights were shit houses. That's my opinion. Shit houses. Putting a young kid in with Ortiz. Fucking, well, he had 10 fights and he's fighting Luis Ortiz. The WBA interim champion who should have been upgraded to regular champion. So basically, he's going in with a world champion, right? world championship level guy, but no belt online to take a good hiding. Who's allowed that to happen? The same people that allowed Brook to fight Golovkin, the same promotional outfit. These people are not your friends. I say this to people all the time. They're not your mates. Promoters are not your mates. Right? They may come across as your mate. They are not your friends. Get it out of your fucking heads. You are a piece of meat to a promoter. The sooner people realise that, the better. Frank Warren summed it up years ago. He has a saying that you treat fighters like mushrooms. Feed them shit and keep them in the dark. And that's, and that's what they do. Because they're, the, they're in the money business as well, just like fighters. But the fighter needs the promoter and the promoter needs the fighter. All the rest is just bullshit. All the rules are designed for everybody to fall out. Best mates can fall out of a boxing because the rules are there to be design, designed for it to happen, aren't they? It's like you fall out with your missus, don't you? Well, you fall out with your, with, with your promoters, don't you? That's just how it is. But these promoters, they're not fighters' best mates. Maybe 5% of them end up mates, but it's very, very rare. It's rare, mate, honestly. It's very rare that you, you, you can... That they protect the fighter because it's a money business. Do you see where I'm coming from? Yeah. It's the money business. Um, it's one of them things, isn't it? But I feel for David because I think his careers, when he was with Dennis, I think he was going all right. What we, when he left Dennis, he was undefeated after seven fights. Um, and I think after he left Peter Fury, I think it was just a free for all. People just took liberties with him. But he allowed it to happen, didn't he? And the people who've made the decisions and he always turned to us and said, what do you think about this fight? And blah, blah, blah. And then when it come down to the, a proper decision, he, he made, he's made wrong turnings. Like, he shouldn't have took Ortez's fight, but, because he didn't get paid, but then he got offered an equally a da as dangerous fight against Dubois. And then Eddie Earn and Darren Barker told him to ask for, for astronomical money. And they tried to play poker with Frank Warren when really... He should have took that fight, got a big payday, and got out of sport then, shouldn't he? Really? With hindsight, yeah, but I don't, at the time, just coming off getting better from David Price, I don't think that was a smart move, us. Well, uh, well what, what has he done since then? He's had one fight. No, yeah, yeah, yes, I agree. We, looking, at, looking back with hindsight, yeah. You should have said, I'm looking after myself. You all weren't looking after me when you were pouring in with, 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 when I were fighting Luis Ortiz and he should have said, I'm looking after myself here. Now, Darren Barker, once he didn't get that fight, told him to retire. Now, you ain't got it no more. Retire. But yet, Darren Barker were willing to train him against a bar if he'd have got the money that he asked for. Do you know what I mean? He asked for an astronomical amount of money. Astronomical. Barker would have trained him then. He wasn't bothered about, oh, you ain't got it. You've had too much miles. You should retire. Miles on clock and all that. He were willing to gut it well one more time with him to get that payday, weren't they? Mm. Shit houser, Darren Barker, you're a shit house. Come see me. You know what I mean? Shit houses, mate. Shit houses. And Dave, Dave Allen, right? He's a popular kid and he's had his brain scrambled. He might not think it now, but like you just said, down the line, he's just going to get worse than if beatings he's had. Well, uh, all that that he's had, he didn't get paid for that. So, yeah, maybe he were entitled to a big payday, but. He got too greedy. He should have just took what he were offered and got out of the sport. He knew he would have got beat against a bar. Just turn up and just take your money, wouldn't he? He'd have been entitled to that fight, in my opinion. Yeah, he would have been entitled to a, a good payday, even though he would have got beat. Because at all times that he hadn't been paid, so he should have looked after himself. 
instead of, oh, I don't know about going on here, how would Eddie feel about it? Well, Eddie were telling him to ask for more money. They're not bothered. They're not, but they were going to put him in with the bar. Well, he should have gone and got his money, shouldn't he? But bad decisions, wrong turnings at wrong times in boxing. And before you know where you are, it's like crashing a car into another car head on. Before you know where you are, and believe me, I've been in a head on crash. You've got an engine on top of your chest. You've got an engine on top of your chest in an head on crash, mate. I'm telling you now. And that's what Dave Allen has added. And he's got an engine on top of him, hasn't he? It's. It, 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 Where's he got? Where's he gone? He's ended up smashed up, hasn't he? Did you see that no, fight what? against David Price? Did you see it? No, what? Yeah, it was big. I could imagine Did Peter Fury watching that and screaming at his telly, Dave, move your fucking head. Because that's what I used to say to Dave, move your fucking head, I don't want a tough guy. You know what I mean? Because he's used to Huey and Tyson going like that, moving their heads, isn't he? With slipping punches. You've got Dave just here plodding forward. Off. I bet David Price's hands were broke that night because he hit him that many times, didn't he? Yeah, and he's not set. Imagine, sort of David punch. Price, you could say, his biggest puncher in world boxing, couldn't yeah. you, on his day? One of, one of, one, one one of yeah. One of, or probably the biggest puncher. Yes, you, you're going to kick. Dave there, 30 minutes, and then bashing him up. Oh, I don't like that, man. Do, do you know what? I, I I think he can be a good pundit. I think he can be a good pundit, and he can, he can be very successful at that. Yeah. But it's just if he gets the opportunities to. Yeah, but how can they do it? How can they have him as an expert analysis? They can't because how can he be classed as an expert? He's not one about. So you got so they've got to be careful what they do with him, aren't they? Really? Yeah, but he speaks all right. On not, that, it, it comes over all right. It's not. It's not expert. You, you got. Listen, mate. It, <clears throat> if you have got people like Dave Coldwell doing punditry, you, you could have Dave Allen. Yeah, I suppose you could. Yeah, you could have. You could. Yeah. And if he comes across well, and it, you know, do you know the way they work? They track the social media and. See what people are saying about him. if he gets a good if he gets a good um, if he gets a good review, it it be invited back. Yeah, I don't and I don't think he's got it in him to be a company man. I just well, I like I like like to think not, but just to go along <coughs> with him, he's too passionate about the sport. He just tell it at his. I don't want to see him fight again though because he get smashed up. But he will come back because. Pugs like Dave, pugilists, they they always think they've got one left in them, don't they? No, he's he's done there. He's done anyone. But it's a shame anyone. he is done. It, 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 it was his last fight. What were he twenty seven on his last fight? Mm. I think it's shocking. I think it's really, really, really shocking that somebody can be used like that and abused like that, and it's in front of our eyeballs. This. It's in front of everybody's eyes what were going on, isn't it? The fights that were putting him in. Uh, yeah, it was getting um, it was get it was getting um, the pack the, the cracks were appearing, but they were just paving over the cracks by saying, "Oh well, it's a good opportunity for Dave and it's this and that and it's the usual it's the usual spill what we hear and the usual blag we hear from certain promoters and certain people working on the telly." Yeah, what do you think about uh, Mayweather against Logan Paul, or is it Jake Paul? Whichever one is it, Logan Paul? Uh, joke, joke. I won't watch it. Not interested. Not interested. Load of load of rubbish. Looking forward. Rather watch Josh Kelly versus David Ivanisa coming up January thirty. If you look forward to that more. Than That's a good fight, fight, yeah. Very good fight. That's a good fight, that. Does it happen, Russ? Does it happen? Does it happen? Uh, yeah. I don't know. You'd have to say that it's it's been uh, what's the word messed about. They've they've been messed about, haven't they? With even Ishan, I think he wants the fight. I I think it's bigger now than it were the first time around. So if they messed it around to hype it up, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. I, I... Listen, a lot of a lot of things go on behind the scenes, but that fight was just meant to happen just before this COVID kicked in in March the thirtieth, yeah. 
which is March 30th this year. So why has it took another 10 months to get on? I don't know. We could have the pandemic, I suppose, but I don't know. But I want to see it happen. I want to see Conor Ben against Kelly anyway as well. Yeah. He's another yeah. one. The predicting big things with Conor Ben. Let's hope he can do it. But Listen, he graphs. You can't take it away from him because he gets a lot of stick for his name and that he graphs and that. And, he, he, you know, he, he, listen, all fighters should graft. Do you know what I mean? It's a tough sport, isn't it? And it's, it's, um, he, he, he's made a lot of improvements and he's passing the eye test. But, I mean, Eddie coming out saying, oh, he's world class and that. He's like, no, come on. Come on. This is, this is the problem. People don't pull him up that is saying these things about, oh, well, Conor Ben's a, he's world class and, no, he's no, he's not world class yet. Do you know what I mean? You're world class when you beat world class fighters. He's not won a big title thing. yet, has he? No, I mean, but I think he's. I do think. I think he's British level. I don't yeah, I can't okay. But we'll give him British level then. But he hasn't won a British title yet, has he? Well, nobody. British no, no more. They all want to pick up a trinket belt and then get get in top fifteen, don't they? Nobody wants to put the graft in. There's no shortcuts to success, you know. Tyson Fury and Billy Joe went through all the levels, didn't they? Every level, right? And they're undefeated world champions, Tyson and Billy Joe. So that's the way to do to go about it. Go through the levels, learn your craft. Then you're not far wanting than a when you're in with big boys. That's my opinion of it, anyway. What's next for Billy Joe? You know. I don't know. Probably let's hope he can stay out at kitchen. <laughs> Keep his nose out fridge. Uh, I don't know. Is, is is it, is, uh, is, if Canelo's planning to fight in February, then May, yeah, right, and he's got to fight you, Jim, what would you do? Do you, if you Billy Joe, do you, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you get his Andre fight on in February? I think Billy should fight Canelo next. He's got to do now. He's got to fight Canelo. At one six eight, he has got to step up to the plate. Any other fight for Billy Joe, I can't get behind now, because there's a lot of British kids have fought Canelo now, isn't there? Yeah, but Billy's one of them. And he's in his weight category, but he's not chasing these guys down, is he? No, but it. I listen, if everybody... he chased Vladimir down and Wilder, Billy Joe, or was he chased down? He hasn't chased anybody down, has he? No, he's, he's not. Kicked. Everyone wants the lottery ticket, didn't they, Russ? Everyone wants the lottery ticket, and 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 going through going through the route of least resistance and least risk. Yeah, I just want to see. I want to see Billy Joe in a fight now that excites me. Uh, anybody else other than Canelo ain't going to excite me. I don't. Maybe Golovkin fight. Would Billy want to risk that? No, I don't. I would Golovkin want to step up eight pound? I don't know, but I'd like. I'd like to, to, see, I'd like to see Billy Joe against Charlo, mate. That's just a, sort of a fight that don't get talked about, but I'd like to see that. But it's it's not a pay per view, is it? That I don't think so. Billy Joe <laughs> well, against Callum Smith? Why not? I don't think that'll happen, there, Russ. No. No, I don't think that's this. Billy Joe against Eubank rematch. Billy Joe against Ryder rematch. Good fights. They're 50 50 fights, then. Billy against yeah. Eubank, 50 50. Ryder against Billy. That's a 50 50 now. Because I think Billy is on the slide. That's what I think. I think he's just doing enough to get through the fights. I think he's showing all the signs of a fighter that's reached the top of the mountain and. He's coming down and down now, but not fast coming down, just slowly coming down. That's what I think. How long is it since he fought Lemieux? 37 months, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So we can't keep going on about, oh, Billy Joe's real class. Look where did he get it's David Lemieux? 37 months ago. It's a long time, that, isn't it? They need to get him a date sometime in February. He needs to be in training now and get a date for it. Get a date for February and keep himself active. If he's someone, if if he's a fringe world level and that, and then or if he can beat if he can beat someone like an an Andrade or 
it's not really a pleasing fight stylistically. It's a stinker in it, but Andrade yeah. against Billy Joe has got stinker written all over it. it yeah, Jake it, it, Billy it has. Joe has got stinker it, written all over it as well. It, it has Russ, but it's a competitive fight, and we want to see competitive fights. Yeah. And okay. And you can't. I mean, even yeah, like Ryder, a U a Eubank fighter, but Eubank's another one, Russ. The, the jury's still out. You can. Who's Eubank's best win? A, a, what a, a past their prime, James DeGale. He beat Arthur yeah. Abraham, James DeGale. Shot a shot Arthur Abraham. I'm not trying to shoot. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to knock his record. And now I know it might sound like I am, but I mean he's not really. I, I don't see no great wins by either of them, really. To be fair. Yeah, because the. the the fights are not happening. I want to see Canelo against Eubank. That'd be a good fight. At least Eubank could fucking get take the fight, wouldn't he? Look, people get offered the Canelo fight, and you know Billy Joe got offered to fight Canelo, didn't he? he? Didn't take it. I mean, what is he in the sport for? I don't want to hear all this about oh, it's money and this and that. I want to see some fighting. I don't want to hear all this social media knackers. I want to see fights. If a man calls somebody out. I want we want to see it, don't we? We don't want to see all this fucking. I don't know. I just feel that Billy Joe's career. It's been. I don't think no. I don't listen, Russ. I don't think none of them are beating Canelo at the minute, and any time soon either. I think Billy Joe Saunders, right, is probably the best hundred and sixty pound fighter in the world. I think he could turn people on the on the, anybody on the head at hundred and sixty pound. But I think at 168, he loses all his advantages, do you? If he's not icing people at 160, what's he going to do at 168? At an even bigger weight, he ain't, is he? Yeah, but the, the Canelos, the Charlos, the Eubanks, they're really all weirdly 160s. They're not big, super middleweights. It's, right, when, you get to the, it's when you get to the Benavides and the Plants and the Callum Smith, they're the big, super middleweights, isn't they? They're the natural super middleweights, you know. They're, they're, I'd say Canelo probably probably could make sixty again, even though he's a big middleweight. He could probably caught between the two of them. Oh, is so. I'd say Canelo's probably caught between the two of them. That's why he fights. At so he's a one six four guy. Do you think? Probably, but that's probably his ideal weight. That's probably could his he ideal. Weight at that, couldn't he, Canelo, and have his own weight division, couldn't he, if he wanted to? He did it at one fifty five, didn't he? Yeah, when he was when he was a fifty four bus, he was blowing up twenty pounds after the weigh-in. Anyway, he's he's huge, mate. One seven five, wasn't he? No, yeah. one seven four or something. One seven mm-hmm. one seven four. Mm-hmm. Something he got in ring as a one twenty pound and twenty and a half a pound he put on in in one of them. So, yeah, so he's a he's a he was a midweight back then, really just boiling down. Yeah. So um, but I just don't see no I just don't see no one beating him. I'm, some listen, listen. Billy could have a year, year to prepare for him, mate. I, I still don't. I still don't beat him. Canelo's just too fresh. He's been he, not not so much too fresh. He's just too active, and he's just the year. The years of dedication will show up in that fight. I think compared to the years of bad living. Do you think if Billy fights Canelo, he gets beat at one sixty eight? Yeah, I think he gets beat at 66. I don't think it matters where it is. I think he gets you think if more he on ball and stayed at 160 and lived the life a bit better, he'd, he'd now be pound for pound number one at 160, Billy. It's I don't. Right. It's, a, it's a hypothetical conversation, isn't it? But I mean, when have we ever seen Billy Joe Saunders get really hit? Don't get hit, does he? So he could have longevity in sport for another 10 years. That's what I think. But is, is he is he dedicated enough? Does he want it enough? It remains to be seen, doesn't it? Yeah. It, it's getting to that age now where he's 30, 31. Was he 31 now? So, and he's a fighter that relies on his reflexes and his movement, doesn't he? Yeah. So, you start slowing down them, you know, you've got to rely more on your fundamentals, which he's got, which he has got. <laughs> but I still just I still see him getting that boxed and I think, I think Canelo's uh, lateral upper body movement 
a lot better than what people think, really, to be fair. And every movement and I think Billy might be punching thin air a lot. I think we'll give him some issues, but I, I don't I don't fancy him in that fight enough. Yeah, so but it's there to be made, isn't it? But it's there to be made. So what do you suggest then for Billy next? What would you suggest? Um, that's a good question, really. Why can't they make Eubank against Saunders rematch? I mean, Frank Smith at Matchell's marrying daughter, isn't he? Uh, yeah, I think poli daughter. politics. I think politics, Russ. Eubank's sister, sorry, his sis, Chris Eubank Jr.'s sister's get, getting married to Frank at Matchell. So why, why can't they just say, why can't he say, hey, listen, what about you fighting um, Billy Joe to him? He's only got to pick up the phone, hasn't he? Or get his sister to, get his missus to ring brother. So look. I think he's still with Eamon though, isn't he? I think he's still with our Eamon, Russ. And I think, I think, do you know what? I think he's, I think he wants to fight a Charlo over there or a plant. I think he was rumoured to be fighting that Caleb Plant, but Caleb Plant's fighting two at tracks now in uh, the end of January. So, I, I, don't, I think he'll fight. I think he'll fight Charlo. Who'll fight Charlo? You bang. Yeah, that's a good fight. That. Yeah, I'm. I'm got no problem with that fight whatsoever. Would, would set me alarm for that fight. Good fight. Good, good, that's good, a good fight. fight. That that's a good fight. That that's a good fight. No. All right, then, mate. Well, we've covered a lot of topics today. Uh, I've got a right hang on. Yeah. We we have indeed we have indeed so um, well done fire we need to, we need to see you know, we hopefully see more fight announcements and see good fights getting made mate I mean um, exciting times ahead Russ yeah what's the plan for you then I'm gonna watch uh, I'm gonna watch Smokey and the Bandit I always watch that at Christmas it cheers me up and then I'm gonna put Liverpool on I'm just gonna lay you put me telly on. Liverpool. I sat and watched football all yesterday, yeah, mate. Uh, for West Brom, innit? Yeah, and then you've got to Tottenham Wolves is a good game tonight. Yeah, Tottenham Wolves, yeah, but I, I don't think they're going to win league. Are you a Tottenham man? No, I'm a, am I fuck? What, what team are you? West Ham, mate. West Ham like Mark Tibbs, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, my mum my mum grew up near the ground, so I weren't, weren't going to support no one else. I remember West Ham team from years ago when they had Alan Devonshire, Trevor Brookin, Billy Bonds, people like that in team. A bit before my time, but been told plenty of but stories. In 1980, Trevor Brookin scored with an edit, didn't he? I remember it. Yeah, them days are long gone at the minute. Great team in them days. Always play good football, West Ham. Always. Yeah, well. At moment, aren't they? Pardon? Doing well. At the minute, we're not doing bad. It's, it's up and down. West Ham fans, be, he, he's painful, Russ. I, I, I ain't going to lie, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. All right, then, mate. Well, listen, you take care. Uh, Good to speak to you, mate. Um, and Happy New Year to all the hardcore fans, your yeah. family, and uh, anyone who listens. Happy New Year. And um, I hope you enjoyed all your Christmases and that. And... Uh, I'll speak to you in a few weeks, mate. Be in touch. You take care, mate. All the best, Russ. Take care. Bye. This button here, blind as a bar. Uh, I think that's about it for today. A banging headache, man. Off, God. Never drinking again. Famous last words. So peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep sporting boxing. All right. Peace out.